Number five then from the 2022 National Five Paper 2. It's a six mark question. It's the one about means and standard deviations. What does it say here? A school netball team recorded the number of sit-ups each player completed in a minute. And there's the seven results. It tells you the seven anyway, but you could just have counted them. Part A for four marks. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Well, the mean's easy enough. You know what to do with the mean. For the mean, you just add them all up and divide by how many there are. You add them up and divide by seven. But when it comes to the standard deviation, there's a formula for it. There are two formulae for it, but they're there for different reasons. The first formula is for when the mean turns out to be a nice number, an exact number. In which case, when you do the subtraction between each of these and the mean, you end up with a small number to square. If it's not a nice number, then instead of having the difference between each of these and some nasty decimal, and then having to square that, the seconds formula here is for when that's the case, so all you have to do is square these numbers. So it really depends on what is the mean like. Well, for the mean, first of all, I'll make up this table here. I'm not going to fill this in yet because I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. So I'll take my x's. Now, you can just put them down the way they are. I prefer to put them in numerical order, just because it makes the next bit neater. So the first thing is going to be add this up. So you type them in, you press equals, and you get 182. So that's the sum of the x's. Now, to get the mean, you take whatever the numbers add up to, that's the sum of the x's, and divide by how many there are. So that's 182 divided by the 7 of them. So that goes in twice, 4 over, 26. So there's the first mark. The mean is 26. Now what that tells you is you've got a nice number. So I'm not going to use the second formula because I don't, don't want to be squaring these big huge numbers and adding them up when I can just square tiny little numbers because all the differences will be nice now. So I'm going to use the second formula. So what I want is x minus x bar so that I can just square them. I, I like to have them in numerical order because this will follow a nice pattern going from negative to positive and it'll make it easier to add them up for another check. So taking them away, that's 7 away, but it's 7 below. That goes down to 4 below, 2 below, 1 above the mean now, 3 above the mean, 4 above the mean, 5 above the mean. Now the handy thing about this is, not only have you got small numbers, so you can just handle them yourself without your calculator, but you can also check if you've got this correct so far. You can check if this is correct and if you've got these numbers correct, because they should add up to 0. So what you've got here is 13, and what you've got there is 13, but a negative 13, so they do come to zero. That doesn't need to be shown. That, that was just really there as a little check. But the handy thing now is I can just square them. I know these squares. 16, 4, 1, 9, 16, and 25. Now I'm going to add this lot up, which is the sigma this thing. So you find the total of that, which is 120. Now you can use the formula. That formula being the standard deviation is the square root of sigma x minus x bar squared. That's the sum of this. That's that 120 divided by 1 less. So that's going to be the square root of that total was 120. And 1 less will be 6. Now... So the square root of that divided by 6 comes to 2 root 5, but I'll just go for the decimal, 4.472 and so on. Now here's where I'm going to look at the second part of the question in advance, because I'm going to have to compare the mean and the standard deviation with another set of numbers. In the second part it says the standard deviation of this other team is 3.2, so that means I want this to look the same. So now I know I'm going to make that 4.5. Now, there was three marks for this. First mark was for finding this column and squaring it. In other words, getting the squared column. The next one was for using the formula the correct way, putting that total over one less, which is six. And there's one for the answer. You could put 4.47, but I've put 4.5 because I want to compare it appropriately with the other one.
Now part B. Some players in the school's hockey team also recorded the number of sit-ups. So there's another seven there from the hockey team, whether there's seven in the hockey team, I don't know. But this time they got a mean of this. They got a mean, so this is their X bar, and I've got X bar written twice, so I better distinguish between them. That was the netball team, and that was the netball team. So this is now the hockey team. The hockey team is 29. Oh, they're better then, because they've done more. They've got a bigger average, the mean's bigger. And their standard deviation for the hockey team was 3.2. Now that's also better, in that that's more consistent. It's less spread out. This is a better team, if you like. They've got, they're better on average because they've got a higher mean. And they're also better because they're closer together. There's less of a spread amongst them. But that's what you have to write down for the final two marks. You have to make two comparisons. Compare the means and compare the standard deviations. So unfortunately, you just have to write a big sentence. The hockey team had a higher average number of sit-ups. But I'm going to give the reason. I know that because I'm going to compare the averages. Because 29 is greater than 26. The hockey team were more consistent as their standard deviation is less than the other team's standard deviation. And there'd be one mark for each of them. It's basically one mark for knowing what these numbers stand for. The means are a measure of the average number and the standard deviations are a measure of the spread. So you just simply state that the hockey team had a higher average number of sit-ups because their mean was greater and the hockey team were more consistent as their standard deviation was less. Now, so those are the two marks. I don't see a mention of having to put down this numerical justification, but that's usually the case. You wouldn't just state that, you would give the numerical reason for it. So I'm putting that down as part of the answer. Now, if you had decided to use the other formula, to use this formula here, which in itself even takes a lot more time to write down, then you would have done this. You'd have still started off with your same seven numbers, and you'd have added them up, the same as before, to get the total 182, that being the sum of the x's. From that, you'd have got your x bar, as before, as 26, and that would have been the first mark. And then to get the standard deviation, what you would have done is then work out the square of all of those and add up all those squares so you've got the sum of the x squareds. That's this value here, the sum of the x squareds. Whereas this one here is the square of the sum of the x's. These are the two numbers you need to put in here. But now you're going to have to use your calculator for all of this. Well, apart from the 30, because that's 900. Then you're going to have to add them all up. Now you have to put them into there. But having got as far as that, now you get the second mark. Not until you've actually squared all of those numbers and added them up. Now the third mark will just be for putting them into this formula. Just make sure you put them in the correct place. So the adding the squares, that's this one, 4, 8, 5, 2, minus. Now, squaring the sum, the sum is 1, 8, 2, means 1, 8, 2 squared over ends the original number, and n minus 1 is 1 less than the original number of 7, which is 6. Putting them into the formula correctly gets a mark. And the final mark will be for pressing the buttons. And of course, there's a lot more pressing to be done there with the square root of a fraction with a fraction inside of it and so on. But obviously, the answer turns out to be exactly the same. There's that 2 root 5 again. 4.4721 and so on. Round it off to compare it with the other one to 4.5 for the last mark. Forgot to put that mark down there. So that's obviously a lot longer. And there's no intermediate check either, the way you have when you just do the difference between x and the mean, which you just do in your head. And similar, the squaring you can do in your head. Even the addition can just be done in your head. It's a lot quicker if the mean's nice. That would be the formula for a nice mean 
And this is the formula for a nasty mean. Number six then, just for two marks. In this triangle, FGH, you've got two sides and the included angle. That's the pattern you need for the area of a triangle when you've got the formula, which you can look up at the front if you don't remember. But it's just the two sides and the included angle, the sine of the included angle. But you can check that at the front. So it just says for two marks, what is the area of that triangle? So when you look up the front, in case you don't remember it, you'll see the formula, a half AB sine C. Now there's no A, Bs and Cs, but notice, it's just a length times a length, and then the odd one out, the remaining one, will be the one between them. So you need two lengths and the angle between them. So that's the pattern you're going to write down. Now you don't need to put a formula down, first of all. If you did, it would be sine f. It'd be something, something, sine f. A half of the other two, so that must be the g and the h, sine f. But you don't need to put that down. You could just go in with the numbers. Now that I've put that down, I'll have to put it in the right order. So g is the 32. So a half of 32 times 25 times the sine of the angle between them, which is 58 degrees. That's what you'd put down, first of all. You wouldn't really need to have that part down. And just putting that down gets a mark. Now it's just press the buttons and you'll get the second mark. So make sure you're in degrees. Press the button and you get this. You get 339.219 and so on. Now, I'm not sure how exact those figures were, but I think I'll just go for the whole number. 339, and it's in centimetres, so centimetres squared for that mark. So if you wish to go for just 340, because there's only two significant figures there, then you could do that as well.